cherry You were so sweet to me Cherry We have been summoned here today on this 18th day of October 5.50 University Hills Boulevard, Dallas, Texas, where Dr. Holly Anderson Sr. serves as our founding and senior pastor. My name is G. Davis Sr. and I'm serving as our officiant uh, for this uh, most uh, humbling hour to commemorate the life of our dear sister, our mother, our friend, Sister Sherry, Sherry Ann Walker Ray. Right. We thank you for your presence here today. Perhaps your presence uh, lets this family know that we, we care and we are concerned. Right. And we trust and pray that the God of comfort will continue to keep you as only He can. Very beautiful program that has been put together by uh, the family, and we are. Standing with you in prayer, and standing with you in comfort and support. Our program will proceed as printed. There's just a few changes, but we will have our prayer and in song and reading uh, by uh, Sister Debbie uh, Haith. Uh, following Sister Haith, then we'll have our Old and New Testament rendered to us by Reverend Aratha Freeman. He's Social Minister here at the Exciting Senior Hills Baptist Church. Following our scripture lessons, our prayer will be rendered, rendered, rendered to us by Minister Corey Walker. Uh, and then after uh, our pulpit devotion, we will have a musical selection and poetry by the Senior Hills Baptist Church Music Ministry, and then I'll come back uh, to further our program. Amen. Let's say amen for this family. Amen. Let's say amen for
image of God in his likeness. So what is God like? His love, his acceptance, his kindness, his reflection, his forgiveness, his, his mercy, warm-heartedness, his goodness, his compassion, his care, his tenderness. So when God made us, he made us in his image. And when we give that to another person, it brings joy in their life. It's called acceptance. And when we're placed in a family, collectively, that family is required to exemplify this kind of acceptance. We will be judged by the mercy we show on another. However, how does one respond when they are de deprived of all these graces of acceptance? Well, I want to respond, I will respond the way my sister Cherry responded. She was always kind to me, and, and there are a myriad of people who experience her acceptance, her kindness, her generosity, her sweetness, her goodness, her care. Thank you and welcome to the memorial service as we honor our little sister Cherry Ann Walker Ray. Thank you so much.
love working with the schools. Now they had to be obedient mm -hmm. and not break any rules. She had a powerful spirit, a true leader untold. Would often speak her mind, but had a heart filled with gold. She loved singing in the choir, and her part had to be right. If one note was mm -hmm. off key, right. we might be there all night. <laughs> she was a woman of true discipline, knew how to train and treat her pets. They followed all her commands, the sweetest dogs you ever met. When she got sick, it was tiring. She didn't let that bring her down. She kept attending Bible study, aiming higher for the crown. Mm -hmm. Now her earthly job is finished, nothing else to do or say, but rest in peace in Jesus' arms. You passed the test, Miss Cherry Ray. Written by Sandra Choice, we love you, the SHBC Choir. Thank you. I worked with you. We were known as the twins because we both were small, we both had a loud mouth, <laughs> and we didn't play with those kids. We respected everybody. But once Cherry came to Singing Hills, she remembered me right away. And during my birthday in 2022, she sent me a birthday card. And as I was going through my phone, she texted it to me. And I still had it. So what I want to do is replicate, because since we are twins, I want to replicate the things that she said to me. I'm not, I can't say them to her, but I'm saying it to her family. I want you to think about the person that you feel Cherry Ray right was to you. This card said, are you special? Definitely. God made you one of a kind. Think about Jerry now. Are you blessed? Abundantly. God delights in giving his kids the royal treatment. Think about Jerry now. Are you loved? Absolutely. God loves you with an everlasting love that's impossible to measure. So remember, Cherry was special, Cherry was blessed, and we definitely loved her with all our heart. May God bless each and every one of you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gloria Manning. And I just want to say that I met Cherry when she joined the choir here. She was a very sweet, spirited, loving, quiet speaking, but spoke all the time. We would talk every now and again. And I, 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 I just want to say this for a minute. One day, I have this cake that has like a, a leather print column. Well, one day at choir rehearsal, Cherry came in, and she had, Cherry came in, and she had on this head wrap that matched my cake. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, that's so cute. And she said, you like it? I said, yes, I do. She gave it to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask her for it, she just gave it to me. Amen. And so, with that said, I know that she was a giving person right. and that she loved people and we loved Cherry. So Cherry and to the family, we loved her 
and we're going to miss her. Amen. And that's the truth. Amen. We loved her with the love of the Lord, and we're going to miss her in the choir. God bless you and keep you all. Amen.
right now. No. How are you feeling today? Amen. I know your hearts are heavy. And I can see the sad looks on your face. And I don't really know what to say. Well, <clears throat> I really didn't want to do this. But this is my sister. And I have eulogized as a pastor people in my family, my, my mom, members of the churches. So this shouldn't be something strange for me. But I've never had to speak on behalf of a sister, Come on, right. a sister. And her passing reminds me of my mortality. All of a sudden, you know, you have this idea that I can go on. I'm, I'm, I'm strong. I can do it. I can go and I can go. Yeah. All of a sudden, it strikes you in a way that no other death has struck me. Well, right. And so I, I didn't try to pre plan anything. I just decided I'd just speak from my heart. Amen. And this is the most difficult time for me, and uh, I'm trying to hold up the best I can. I can share all my life, and I knew her good and her bad, and the times that she was embarrassing, <laughs> the times when she wasn't embarrassing. We laughed, and we cried, and we got angry with each other. Everything that brothers and sisters go through, she and I went through. All right. Amen. In the last days of her life, I saw her determination, her right. struggle, her faith in God. Right. And, and that's the blessing part of it. It didn't waver. And she just kept believing. I spent a lot of time in the Philippines, and when I was here at last, I saw David ministering to her, and I, I saw how she was. And, you know, in your heart, you feel that times come to me. If you want, if you want to be real with yourself, but all of the things that was wrong with her, you can feel in your heart that times come to me. But by faith, and looking at her faith, I just said, I'm going to keep believing with you. Mm -hmm. right? Amen. But well, we know there's a time that God has put in place for each of us. And, and, and it doesn't matter what, what, what goes on. She was good. Yes. Going bowling, oh, man. doing everything that, I mean, energy. Yeah. She was lively. I mean, she had a birthday party, I'm talking about she was out there dancing and having herself a good time. And just a few months later, she's sick. And sick unto death. Who would have thought? But before I went back to the Philippines, the way she looked and the thing that was going on, I went back confident that she was gonna be alright. And so, things didn't work out for me. She was a headache sometimes. But the lady that, that, that gave the poem, she touched something. She had a good heart. Yeah. And Amen. she loved working with those children. Yeah. Yeah. And no matter if she, how sick she was or how bad she may have felt, those children was on her heart. <coughs> And yes, she loved those dogs. <laughs> and so, I truly love my sister. I'm going to sing this song. I was asked to sing one of them, but there's another song that I believe fits this moment. I want to go to heaven when I
in that sweet by and by. And then I want to join the angels. Join them singing. And then I want my Savior to take me by the hand. And then I want him to lead.
She's been in my life all my life, so I just always call her Charmaine. Amen. Amen. She was a sweet person. Amen. She was always, she was always the smallest one in the family, but she yeah. had the biggest voice. Sometimes. Yeah, she did. Amen. And she was always my big sister, even to the day, amen, that my partner in crime did it. Uh, she was left at home. Jerry Ann was left at home to keep us. We were all we were smaller than she were. And she told me, Come on, help us. She said, Don't go outside. <laughs> she had received the instructions from my mother. <laughs> Anybody know my mother? Know my mother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so no she said, don't go outside. Your man had strict orders from the captain not to go outside. But I went outside. And David didn't stop me. And I tried to be Superman. <laughs> you know, in the projects, they had those clotheslines. And they were in the ground by cement. And the cement wasn't underground, it was up on top. And I jumped, but I didn't fly. <laughs> and I met that cement, and I knew from, from the point I hit it, and I had to be about five or six years old, I started hollering, it's broke, my arm is broke, my arm is broke. <laughs> if I had just listened to my sister, yep. I wouldn't have been there. But she has been a sister to me all of my life, and she will continue to be my sister. And I have fond memories of her. Maybe those that have nobody said anything about this, but I'll just uh, share this a little bit about Jeran. I know some people know Jeran can draw. Jeran yeah. was an artist, yeah. and she could really draw. She loved to sing. She loved that I couldn't be her in bowling. <laughs> And I tried, but I never could, amen. She was good, she was dedicated to whatever she was at. Yep. And she had a heart of love, amen. She, she was herself. She's always been a big sister, she'll always be my big sister. I thank God for her, I will continue to remember her and her memory for the rest of my life. God bless you. Amen. 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 Good uh, afternoon to the family. Pastor Anderson and Pastor Bill Davis and Freedom. My name is Keith Jennings and I stand on behalf of the Green Manual Bowling League. Amen. Amen. We did mention, and it's been mentioned, that Cherry was a bowler. Well, we are here to witness that Cherry was a bowler. And all those that was able to make it today, why don't y'all need to stand and wave your hand? These are just a few of the members who came out of here. And, uh, Sherry, and Sherry was a faithful bowler. Each year she would call and, 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 and keep, are we bowling this year? I want to make sure we're bowling. Are we bowling in the summer? Are we bowling in the fall? She wanted to know if we were bowling. And I stand on behalf of the Great Mighty Bowling League and our president, Pete Silver, who was able to make it today. Um, just want to let the family know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. Not only was she a faithful bowler, but she was a fierce bowler. <laughs> she wanted to compete, and she wanted to win. And that's what's the joy and excitement we did get out of all of that. Uh, one of her teammates, uh, Doris Lewis, is here today. She bowled with her, and she, I bowled with her on a number of occasions and in competition as well. But I, I, I can just look back on Sherry as she was bold then. Uh, she was a strategic bowler, small in stature, but she would command that ball to do what she wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. If Sherry needed to pick up a spare and look up on this side of the lane, Sherry would throw it on this side of the lane. And then she'd sit there and she'd tell that ball to come on over. <laughs> she'd tell that ball to come on over, Dr. Freeman. And by the time we get down there, that ball would check up and go up and pick up. <laughs> she, she was just that kind of a commander in bowling. Yes. But the other day, the good Lord saw her in her situation. And I can see him right now telling Cherry. Yeah. 
and, and we won't be praying for this family. We won't be brought a card for you, family, and we want to present this to you all. Uh, but we're going to miss you. Yeah. We're already, uh, uh, we've been trying to find out where she was, where, where she was uh, in re rehab and everything. So we apologize for not being in communication. We just couldn't find her. But we want to know Cherry's going to be missed. Yes. Cherry's going to be missed. And we're praying for you all that you all can have comfort during these situations, okay? So uh, to the church family, Mr. Cherry, to the family, to the daughter, we love you, and we're praying for you to continue. May God bless you. Amen. Amen.
she followed me to every daycare that I worked at. And that let me know that I must have been doing something right because she went everywhere that I went. She said, DP, wherever you go, I'm going. Right. And um, that just let me know. I said, I got to be doing something right, God. I guess I, I guess I am. And so she was just that person where she just volunteered her services for everything. One of the most beautiful things that uh, I can say that I had with her is that we had a relationship with God together. She was a believer, I'm a believer, and we always prayed together. When she would uh, come home Sundays from uh, listening to the sermon, that I, we would talk about what our pastors preached about, and then we would take that and compare that to our lives, and we would talk about how we needed to apply that in our lives at the daycare, what could we do better with the children. So it's different for me. She was my buddy. Right. She was my friend. She was my sister in Christ. She was a second mother to me. She was my best friend. Right. She was everything to me. Um, and even though we had such a view, I remember when we first we met at well at ABC, and nobody really wanted to be her friend because she was a little dark skinned lady. Nobody never wanted to bother me. And she had that little green wrap full. And we would sit in the car and we would eat hog head cheese and crackers. And she wouldn't eat much because she had blood pressure, high blood pressure, so she wouldn't eat much. And every night at 9 o'clock, we would get off the phone because she had to take her blood pressure medicine. And we always prayed. And, um, and to the family, I do want you guys to know that she loved y'all dearly. Um, she never said anything. I never heard her say anything negative. She loved y'all dearly. I do want y'all to know that. I don't know much about most of the family, but from what I heard, it was always good things. And she loved y'all very much. Um, and y'all just keep me uh, lifted up in prayer because, like I said, I've been going through withdrawals. I used to talking to somebody three times a day to nothing. You know, it's different. And watching her suffer for the past three months. And one thing that I can say, I'm here to, I'm here in Thanksgiving too for God because she was in an incoherent state and she went to being coherent. She threw her hands up and she said, Lord, take me. And when I heard Debbie said, say those words, I was good after that because that let me know she was ready to go. She was tired of the pain and she was tired of the suffering. And I just want to say, Lord, I thank you. Uh, 
uh, a, uh, my uh, Avery's house sometime when she ran up to my house. We lived up the street, just, you know, up the corner, around the street. Yeah. We went around the street up the corner. And she would always talk about this little red wagon that we used to play in the street. <laughs> she remembered that red wagon. You know, I forgot about that red wagon that the chair had brought up when we would talk. When she came to the house, when Tammy came to the house, her and uh, Trafina, Trafina's husband, a few years back, we all had dinner and stuff, yeah. and then, you know, after that, we had dinner the other place out, but I went to see her when she was in the hospital. And, you know, at my church, we prayed for her. You know, I had my church praying, we were praying for a continued life with her. But, you know, God is a sovereign God. Yes. And, and he knows what and when to do. I think of a song, I'm not going to say anything, but it says, I will come and lie down at your feet, Lord Jesus. But well, she's in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I don't mind. I go in, I sure be happy just to get out to the feet. If I could be in the presence of the Lord, I miss my cousin. And I was sure hoping for life to go on for her. And I just been praying for her. Uh, uh, for her Trafina, her daughter, her sister Debbie, all the family in prayer, just they're asking God to uplift and just to bless. Oh, yeah. Thank you.
<laughs> where Anthony just described. And there's a lot of us shared that I, mm -hmm. I didn't know because of the age difference. But what I can tell you what I learned about my cousin is that whenever she came home, she always had a smile on her face. Mm -hmm. She always told me how much she loved me. Mm -hmm. And I loved her. Yes. And uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Anthony. I never know what the Lord's going to call from at home. And um, back in April, we had a relative that passed. Our uh, aunt Doc, Ed Trevino, Debbie. I can't remember Debbie to call him. Debbie mm -hmm. and Anthony. This one person with Anthony. And uh, I was happy to see him. But we didn't know he was coming. And I met Anthony. He was outside the church. And I introduced myself and I told him, I said, man, I thank you for bringing my family to our cousin homecoming because if he hadn't brought her, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to see her. And I didn't know that was going to be last time I was going to see her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what y'all don't know is that this has been a year for me to reflect and look at home. And my cousin Clarence said about life because at the beginning of the year, when I told him, I said, man, I thank you for bringing my family to our cousin homecoming because if he hadn't brought her, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to see her. And I didn't know that was going to be the last time I was going to see her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what y'all don't know is that this has been a year for me to reflect and look at home. And my cousin Clarence said about life because at the beginning of the